Hello and welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion with vector fields in three space. In the last couple of videos, we talked about the curl. And remember, the curl of a vector space in three dimensions is is how the how the vector field rotates around the system. And today, and in this video, sorry, we're going to talk about what's called divergence. Now, divergence of a vector field is the tendency of the vector field to move. It's the tendency. So think of like being a, a vector field being like a fluid. The tendency of a fluid to move, either to move or collect or disperse about a point about a point. In other words, where the curl will give me its rotation, the divergence kind of gives me its velocity. We can kind of think of that. The, uh, the fluid's velocity at a certain point. So how do we get divergence? Well, to get vector to get the curl, we took the cross product of the gradient and the vector field. To get divergence, we're going to take the dot product. So now we're going to look at the dot product of the vector field and the gradient itself. And if we take the dot product, remember if this is my vector field, is there's my m, there's my n, and the vector field is going to be the partial of m with respect to x plus the partial of n with respect to y. And of course this is in two dimensional or plane, and in three dimension if we take the dot product and we call it div f, we would get the partial of m with respect to x, the partial of n with respect to y, and the partial of p with respect to z. And of course, this is of course in three-dimensional space. Now, if the divergence is zero, we say this is divergence-free. In other words, it's not moving. So we'll so we'll take a look at something. So the divergence of a vector field represents a derivative of the vector field and can represent the velocity of a particle within the field. In other words, the divergence measures the rate at which a particle will flow per unit volume at a point. So let's take a look at how we can find the divergence. So we're given this point x, y, z to 1, negative 1, and we want to find the divergence of our vector field. Well, notice this is in three dimensions. There's m, there's n, and there's p. So my rule to get the divergence of f, my rule is the partial of m with respect to x plus the partial of n with respect to y plus the partial of p with respect to z. Now I think these are pretty easy to remember because remember this is already my partial with respect to x, my partial with respect to y, and my partial with respect to uh, z. So we're just basically taking our second derivative. Another way to look at it, this is f x x plus f y y plus f z z. Another way to kind of look at that. <coughs> so getting our divergence, um, if we take a look at the first one, ready, let's take a look here. If I take the derivative of m with respect to x, we're going to get 3x squared y squared z plus the derivative of n with respect to y, that's just going to be 0, plus the derivative of p with respect to z, and again that's just 0. And I just plug in my point. By divergence at our point 2, 1, negative 1, we get 3 times 1, uh, 2 squared times 1 squared times negative 1, and of course that becomes negative 12. So what is this telling us? Well, this tells us that the velocity at the point at 2, 1, negative 1. That's going to give us our velocity at that point. So a couple fun facts, right? A little fun fact for you. If the divergence is 0, then the divergence is what we call incompressible in hydrodynamics and uh, solenoidal in electricity and magnetism. So we're not, so we can't compress anymore, or we, we're, or it's not rotating, or it's not moving. And there's a quick little theorem right here: the relationship between curl and divergence. If we have a vector field M I N J P K, is our vector field, and if M N and P have continuous derivatives then the divergence of the curl will always be zero. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you all around later. Bye-bye.